Yo brother, it's time for us to start talking the real man. We've been sugarcoating too much, we've got to start calling everything out for what it is. Hey guys, well, I'm on my first long ride on the EX30 and I gotta close my helmet. <laughs> it's windy. I'm uh, riding down from my, from my house. I'm taking a ride to visit Chris Chaffet, the ex uh, pedal king. <laughs> Hopefully you can hear me. Uh, yeah, I'm finding a pretty good, pretty good wind coming in from the ocean. First, a big shout out to Liam, who's uh, providing me this EX30 for some good testing. I've already taken it for. Um, I already let's say I put about 10 miles on it, and after that 10 miles, by the way, I decided I was going to buy one. <laughs> I've been on the fence. I wanted, so I've, I've ridden the Sherman S. I've done a lot of riding on the Commander Pro, and uh, I wanted to ride the EX30 before making my decision among those three wheels. Because I'm, I'm not going to buy them all. Wow, there's wind. <laughs> so um, after riding the 10 miles on the X30, it was like a no-brainer to me. This wheel rides beautifully. I love the shock. I've been playing with the shock. Right now, I'm, I'm, I think I'm closer to 100 PSI, which I think I, I put it too low now. So I started with 250 PSI. So for me and my riding weight, a 200 pounds, Probably uh, 150 is going to be good for me, for the kind of riding I do. I suspect though I'm going to I'm going to put a coil shock on here, just to get a little more a uh, little more cushion. <laughs> uh, uh, my eyes are drying out. <laughs> so um, so yeah, I love the shock, the ride, the. The wheel does not feel tall like the, the master. Beautiful center of, uh, center of gravity, I guess, the balance in this wheel. Uh, again, I haven't tested, I haven't really measured the height of the pedals versus the other uh, wheels like the Commander Pro. But uh, in terms of riding, it just does not feel tall at all. Really well balanced. I love it. Uh, Getting on and off the wheel, you never feel like you're kind of hopping on it like you, you do with something like the Master or the Master Pro. It has, uh, it just has so much power too. And, uh, you know, it's a heavy wheel, but it does not ride heavy at all. And it accelerates fast. <laughs> uh, Again, since I, I want to put a coil shock on, I can do that on this wheel. On the Sherman S or the Commander Pro, you're you're stuck with whatever suspension they've, they've given you, pretty much. So I really like the ability to, to play around with the suspension more on on these Bigode style wheels. Uh, you know, so <laughs> just right off the bat. You know, I've, I've made my decision. <laughs> uh, you know, we'll put time on the wheel and see if something comes up, but <laughs> so far it's just great and it's running cool. Uh, I'm riding in the you know upper 20s, lower 30s right now, miles per hour. The temperature's been staying about 28 degrees Celsius max. So it's another cool running wheel. 
By the way, I don't know if you can see the mountains behind me, but uh, just incredible Southern California. In all my years of riding, I've never seen so much snow on the mountains. The snow level is really low, which unfortunately is keeping me from riding in the mountains <laughs> for a while. Uh, I think a lot of the roads are still snowed in. So I'm kind of stuck. I'm stuck uh, doing uh, rides like this on, on the river trails, the river beds. Uh, yeah, so just, I don't know, I'm trying to think of some negative things about to say. Uh, if, you, if you've seen my unboxing video, uh, <laughs> I don't really have much to bad to, to say. Um, uh, I suppose, and this is nitpicking, uh, I think the battery cases should be metal, but, but not corrugated metal. Because <laughs> it, it's really a pain in the butt to, to put pads or other stuff on it. Uh, the lights, the lights should be adjustable. I, I think I can, uh, I think I can drill out the hose on the existing mounting bracket to be able to tilt the light up a little bit. Because right now it's pointed too far down toward the ground, so it wouldn't be good for uh, for night riding by itself. So, but. As you can see, I'm, re I'm really hunting for uh, bad things to, to say. Uh, I, I love this wheel. All right, so I'll just show you a little video footage, maybe some commentary here and there. I'll be doing more riding, of course, different kinds of rides. So I'll see what the <coughs> battery performance is. How does it handle in, in uh, mountain trails? Hopefully once the snow clears, I can take it up in the mountains.
Well, I am experiencing a uh, technical difficulty here. <laughs> Something with the batteries. Uh, yeah, so one thing with this wheel, now I've only really, this will be the first time we really put miles on the wheel to do a real full charge, but uh, a couple of little charges I've done. I haven't been to get it above 131 volts. And uh, I'm talking with a few other EX30 owners. They've been having that issue too. But not all of them. I talked to at least one EX30 rider, a mask, <laughs> that uh, has been able to charge, I think he said maybe 134 volts. So I started this ride at a deficit. I was at a hundred, a little, actually 130 point something volts when I started the ride. But I'm down to 108 volts right now. And I've only ridden about 24 miles. And my speeds have been in the high 20s, low 30s miles per hour. Mostly I would say high 20s. There has been a strong headwind, but still, Something seems off. <laughs> um, yeah. So more experimentation, depending on how low it gets and uh, what Chris feels like doing. I might open up the wheel when we get there and uh, maybe check each individual battery to see what the voltage is like, just to see if they're they're all running the same voltage. So more to more to come on this front. <laughs> Hopefully I make it to Chris's place because I still got ten I don't know, maybe ten more miles.
<laughs> it's not looking good. I'm starting to get tilt back. I have, uh, yeah, I'm getting tilt back. Damn, I got about four miles to go. Um, I'm not gonna make it. I'm at, at uh, well, 99 volts. So that's not good actually. Uh, tilt back is supposed to be 96 volts on this wheel. Yeah, so uh, Godway spec sheets are lying. That sucks. <laughs> so I'm basically out of power at 100 volts. 99.8. Ah, there's always something. Well, hopefully that can be fixed with a firmware update. Uh, but besides that, I've only gone 30 miles. <laughs> And I went through my whole battery. Uh, okay, <laughs> time to call Chris, see if he can try and pick me up. I did bring my Roger charger with me so I can, uh, I can charge this guy up. <laughs> we'll see you in a bit. All right, Chris to the rescue. Hey, Chris. Hey there, loser. What's <laughs> up? Hey, hey. What the hell? <laughs> Seriously, I'm just curious. Yeah. Can, uh, it's... Um, a 3,600 watt hour wheel not making I... from Downey. Did yeah. somebody have a senior moment and not charge no, last no. night? It's like 30 miles. Well, first of all, there's an issue that um, I haven't been able to charge this wheel above 131 volts. And uh, I'm not the only one. There's a, a few other. 131 of 134.4. Yeah. That doesn't seem like a lot less. Wow, come on. It is a lot though. But even besides that, even at 131 volts to here, I should be able to make it. So. Yeah, I mean, I'm, a 16X could make it from Downey to here. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping, well, if you're up for it, we can just take off the top and measure the batteries to see if well, yeah, let's drag it back because, to the shop because I did, and figure uh, out what we can ride while that starts to charge. But I may put you on my Monster Pro so you can get home because I don't think you can want to wait around to try to top this off and then not well, know if it can even make it. Well, I, I think I could make it back. I was riding, you know. Ha, oh, and you have me in case you get into trouble to drive the well, county. My wife could probably pick me up. But, okay. Uh, I, was uh, riding, I was riding in the high 20s to get here uh -huh. against this wind. Yeah. Am I be, are, we, are you recording your journey? Of right course, now? of course. I okay. want to. I want to show. I have a confession to make. I You've been on candid camera with Roger here uh, too. I wanted to hear. Uh, the, hang up this game. I wanted up to hear the, the excuse machine. <laughs> no excuses. <laughs> yeah, it's the wheels' fault. He can only charge to 131, you know, volts. So. No, no I'm. I'm pretty sure I've only been. Well, I can't. I can't hear him. He, he can't hear you. It's a little windy out here and you know, he's getting old kind of going deaf and stuff I, I blame Leem. I think this is that underground wheel sales <laughs> that there's no support There's just like there's like it's the whole thing is shady <laughs> no, as no, no. <laughs> You can edit okay. this part out Mark. No, yeah. no. It's all fun and games, but uh, yeah. I blame Roger's fast charger because uh, it's oh, yeah, it's that char It's yeah. the Roger charger. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Absolutely. There you go. <laughs> okay, that's the best theory of the situation okay, I found yet. I'm gonna try and get this car this well actually his can car, do, his can, car is not much bigger than uh, the wheel, actually. You can <laughs> put one of these on each the, corner, and it would be. He calls this a car. Look at this thing. It's four inches bigger than a smart car, so don't be, don't be <laughs> littling my monster truck here. Yeah, I should be nice. He's he's picking me up after all. So all right. Yeah. Let's see you back at the shop. All right, we made it back to Chris's shop, and on the way driving here, we noticed that. What's a high pitch beeping? Or not buzzing. So you can still hear it. So you, you, you yeah, I'm sure you can hear it now. <clears throat> so that is the BMS. And uh, so 
that's the problem with uh, why I'm getting low range is at least one of the battery packs has a has an issue so I'm going to hook up a fast charger and see if we can pump up the voltage and we might Chris is up for it and we'll see maybe open it up and, and uh, measure the individual voltage at each battery pack just to see if one of them is particularly low it's which got a multimeter around here somewhere which I imagine that is the case so and we can make tea so that's a bummer well I'm back in my workshop and uh, still buzzing away I didn't expect it would change it's been about 24 hours since this uh, started happening uh, I had to get a special cable that I'm going to use hopefully to fix this thanks again Roger <laughs> huge huge thanks I'm gonna to have to make one of these since I'm looks like I'm getting in the habit of um, driving my wheels to uh, too low of a voltage I'm going to uh, take off the the seat rubber and open up this so eight screws total and get in the control board disconnect all the batteries and uh, show show you what I'm going to do from there all right well I've opened up everything and uh, unfortunately have determined that one of the battery packs is bad it's the front left pack I measured you know at first I disconnected the power to the board control board disconnected the four batteries and measuring across them I don't know if you can see but 59 volts the other two are 57 but then when I measure this one 33 volts which is really low uh, bad battery pack low and uh, so I talked to Leem Leem has a uh, bat phone connection directly to Bagode, <laughs> so uh, they had me do a little video just to confirm that and also measuring the voltage from the white lead to the black lead normally this is essentially zero volts and in this case it's eight volts and uh, Basically, if, if there's a high voltage on that lead, it uh, goes into the power distribution board on, um, in the wheel, and that triggers some FET relays, digital relays essentially, solid state relays, which uh, turns off access to the battery pack from the control board, and you can't charge it. So you're left with a bad battery pack. Um, Bigode is going to ship me out a new one, but I'll be this wheel will unfortunately be down for probably uh, a week or so. Hopefully, in the next handful of days, I'll get the battery pack. This does highlight one problem I have with this design. I mean, it's definitely it's good that it identifies a problem with the battery pack, but then what do you do? Here I'm with a wheel, it's buzzing. You can't, you, you cannot turn off that uh, buzzing. If it, was, if it was only a low battery and I could recharge the battery, then the buzzing would go away. I've actually done that on another wheel. Uh, but in this case, when you definitely have a bad battery pack, unless you take, remove the batteries from the case, remove the shrink wrap and take apart the battery pack, you can't get that beeping to stop. Uh, now I have a, I'm in a very vibrant EUC community in Southern California, I'm surrounded by people with expertise, equipment, so forth. So, you know, it's easy for me to get support. Now in this case, uh, there's nothing we can really do with the battery pack. I'm going to give it to Roger. He's actually coming over right now to uh, pick it up. Roger's going to, he'll be able to take it apart, take off the BMS. Uh, he has equipment to check all the cells so he can, and if the cells aren't bad then it's a bad BMS issue and he can uh, he can get a new BMS I think from the go fix the battery pack you know obviously most people can't do that most people uh, I suspect are not living in a vibrant EUC community surrounded by people so what are you supposed to do when you have a 
a bad battery pack like this? Uh, how, how do I get rid of it? Uh, you know, do I dig a hole in my yard? <laughs> well, I don't want to do that. Uh, you put it <clears throat> in a tub of water. Well, isn't that going to ignite the battery pack ultimately? I, you know, I don't know. And I can't imagine taking it to some place. Here I have a bad battery pack and it's, it's got an alarm going off. Uh, if you were in one of those uh, recycle centers, would you want to accept the battery pack? So I really just don't know what to do. And then say, okay, you've disposed of the battery and you get a new battery pack from uh, your dealer or, or Bagode. Well, before you plug that battery pack in, you need to charge it to equalize it with the other batteries. And in that case, it's going to be, a, let's say, medium charge, 50 volts. Fully charged battery would be 67.2 volts. Well, how are you going to do that? There's no, uh, your typical battery charger, obviously, for this kind of a wheel, would be 134 volts. I have the Roger charger, <laughs> so I can... Uh, set it to 50 volts or 67 volts. I can set it to whatever voltage I need to equalize the battery packs and charge it up. But if you're, again, not in this position, what are you supposed to do? It's really, it's really tough. It's uh, a lot of you would ultimately probably have to send the wheel back to a dealer that can support it. And that's just a major headache. It's going to be expensive. It's going to be time consuming. Uh, yeah, so that's that's my issue with this with this design. And it's not only Bigode, by the way. It's Veteran. Veteran has the same kind of battery packs, same kind of BMS alarms. You're going to be in the same uh, position. All right. Well, uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, video and uh, look for the. Next EX30 uh, video. Meanwhile, I'm going to take off my uh, side panel and disassemble the battery so I can give it to Roger when he shows up. Until next guy time, guys, uh, safe riding. <laughs>